In this video, we're going to look at the topic of genetics, epigenetics, and even what I call epi-epigenetics. And the word epi means beyond, one layer above. So epigenetics is one layer above genetics, and we could say that epi-epigenetics is two layers above genetics. So what we have to understand is that there is so much more to learn and understand about our genes than we either learned in school or what we learned from our doctor or what we're being told by the prevailing medical system. And by the way, I need to say I am in no way an expert on this topic. I'm going to be introducing in this presentation an expert on the topic, but I am not an expert in the topic. And what I'm hoping to do in this video is just to introduce a few new concepts and give you maybe a different perspective that you might wish to explore further by yourself. So if we look at a brief history of genetics, and I'm talking really brief here and from my layperson's perspective, the history of genetics started with the work of a man called Gregor Mendel, and he published uh, some work in 1866 describing what came to be known as Mendelian inheritance. And many theories of hereditary pr proliferated in the centuries before and for several decades after his work. And in the 1940s and 50s, experiments pointed to DNA as the portion of chromosomes that held genes. And a focus on new model organisms such as viruses and bacteria, along with the discovery of the double helical structure of DNA in 1953, marked the transition to the era of molecular genetics. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, which I can hardly pronounce. And it is a molecule that carries the genetic instructions used in growth, development, functioning, and reproduction of all known living organisms and many viruses. And heredity is the genetic information which passes from parent to offspring, passing the traits of, uh, you know, from parent to offspring. And it is the process by which an offspring acquires or becomes predisposed to the characteristics of its parent cell or organism. And the study of heredity in biology is called genetics, which includes now the field of epigenetics. So epigenetics is the study of cellular and physiological phenotypic trait variations that result from external or environmental factors that switch genes on and off and affect how cells express genes. And I'm going to be introducing Bruce Lipton, who you may be well aware of in a moment, but he was the person that really coined the term epigenetics and brought this to the attention of the world because his research showed that DNA was changed and affected by what happens in the environment. In other words, it's not all just hereditary from your parents. And this was absolutely life-changing. Up until that point, most people believed that genes and DNA were set, that things were passed down, passed down from one generation to the next, and that whatever was passed down to you was set in stone. And that's why a lot of people still say things like, well, I blame it on my genes or, you know, it's hereditary. This is this is the paradigm that a lot of people have and still have. But Bruce Lipton blew this theory out of the water with his research on epigenetics or what came to be known as epigenetics, where he absolutely proved that DNA and genes change according to the environment. And it's not just the environment that changes the genes. It's not the environment by itself. It is the internal response on an emotional, mental level inside the body, 
which changes the expression of that gene. So I'll just say that again. It's the internal emotional and or mental response inside the body which changes the physiology, the chemical secretions inside the body that turn on or off, and the, and the word for that is expresses, that turns on or off certain genes and DNA inside the body. In other words, say for example, somebody is in a situation where they're growing up, and this is very common, they're growing up in an environment where they don't feel safe, then their body is going to be going into stress and it's going to be secreting certain chemicals and stress hormones. And that is going to have an effect at a cellular level, but also at a molecular level and an atomic level and a quantum level inside the body. And that is going to change the expression of the genes and the DNA inside the body because everything is interconnected in the body. You can't separate anything, which means that if you had two people who were exactly the same, but you separated them and one was put into an environment which was very stressful, very abusive, very scary, and you put the other person into an environment which was very safe and they felt very at ease in that environment, then even if those two people were identical, what would be going on inside their bodies would be very different as a result of how they're responding to what is happening in the environment. Be aware that when Bruce Lipton talks about it's your environment that changes the expression of your genes, what he's really saying is it's your response to the environment and how you're feeling inside and what's going on physically, mentally, emotionally inside you that is changing the expression of your genes. So we can really say that genetics has been superseded and old fashioned genetic theory can seriously limit our understanding of what creates or dispels illness. Because if we're constantly blaming our genes, so to speak, and putting all the blame on the genes and saying, well, because my father or my mother or my grandmother or whoever it was had this gene or had this illness, therefore I'm either more predisposed to it or I'm definitely going to get it or that's why I got it. That's just a, a mind, the mind's way of thinking. Now, it's not to say that from a medical, physiological, biological perspective that if certain genes or propensities are passed down that we may not be more likely to get those diseases or illnesses. Just need to be really clear to say that that is not not the case. However, what Bruce Lipton's work showed is that we have the power to change our genes. We have the power to have genes turn on and off and change the expression of our genes according to our internal state and according to how we use our mind and how we manage our emotions. And he tends to focus more on the mind side of things, whereas obviously in my work, I'm focusing a lot on the emotional side of things. And the truth is, as you now know, at this stage in the program, is that they, they work hand in hand. What we think creates our feelings and feelings can affect how we think and they go in a loop. And so that's why we need to work on both levels. We need to work on our mind and we need to work on our emotions. They go hand in hand. So when we expand our understanding of genetics to include epigenetics and even epi epigenetics, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, then we can exponentially expand and improve on our health options. Now, modern medicine has been based on genetics. It has a physical focus. In other words, looking for a physical reason for a physical problem. That has been the approach of medicine these days and still is in many ways. But of course, we now know that we're much more than just a physical body. 
We are spirit, we are mind, we are emotions, we are energy. We are all of that combined and everything affects everything else. And so we have to go beyond just this physical focus. But conventional medicine has been mainly a physical focus, uh, which is physics and also treating the end result. In other words, just trying to get rid of whatever the end result is, which is the symptoms and not really seeing that there are deeper reasons and meanings for illness and that therefore illness is just a mistake and that the body has made a mistake. And of course, we now know that that is not the case. Uh, illness is very, very, very rarely, I would say, a mistake and possibly even never a mistake. But in meta medicine, which means above and beyond, the word meta means beyond. So we're going a level beyond medicine, just like epigenetics goes beyond genetics. In meta medicine, we see that we move from genetics to epigenetics and looking at the bigger picture. And by the way, this is the natural evolution to understand things from a different perspective. And it's not that the reality or the truth wasn't there before. It was just that it wasn't seen before. And this is a lot about what this program is about, as you already know. It's about seeing things about yourself that were always there, but you didn't know were there and you didn't understand about yourself before. And once you see those things, you think, wow, how come I never saw that before? Because it's not rocket science. It's actually really obvious, but for some reason I didn't see it. And this is the process of self-realization and self-awareness. It's about becoming aware of what we were previously unaware of. And then once we do that, we see things differently and then we have new choices. So in metamedicine, our focus is not just on the physical. It is on the mind, the emotions, body, spirit, energy, everything. It, it takes everything into account. And rather than just looking at things from a physical level, we're looking at things from a quantum physical level. And instead of treating the end result, we are treating the root cause. We're getting to the roots of the problem. And instead of thinking that illness is a mistake, we start to see that actually there are reasons for it and lessons to be learned. And that if we can identify the root cause and learn the lessons, then we have a much better chance of healing in a comprehensive way. So in a way, we could say there are five levels of healing. The first level is physical medicine. So using something physical to address a physical problem. And that could be medication, it could be surgery, it could be say physio where you're just doing something physical but the point is that level one physical medicine is where physical symptoms are treated predominantly using physical means and i talk a lot about this in my program healthcare consciousness and you which shares how as our consciousness shifts and evolves the types of medicine that we're likely to choose or use or even come across will change because more doors will open up as our awareness increases. So in level one medicine, the cause of illness is predominantly seen as something physical. Then we go into what I call level two or three, which I call energy medicine. And energy medicine takes into account the fact that as human beings, we are made of energy. And according to quantum physics, all matter is energy. And what physics or quantum physics has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt is that if you put just one cell of matter, and that matter could be a tree or it could be a human being, under a microscope and you magnify it a million times, it will be 99% space which is so bizarre for the mind to try and grasp. Science has proven that we are energy beings. Our physical body, our mind, our emotions, our energy, 
spiritual aspect of ourselves, all of those levels, they are all essentially energy. And this is quite a different way to view ourselves compared to when we look in the mirror and see ourselves as a physical object. But even if we can just start to be open to the idea that we are energy, this is going to change our understanding of illness dramatically. And then level four is where we start getting into, or we've actually already started doing it in level two and three, but we could say meta medicine is going beyond and above the physical. And it takes into account all these factors, the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, but also the social, the environment, uh, which includes genetic and epigenetic. So we're expanding out and, and taking more into account. And then if we go up a level from that and we start working with the consciousness, then we start to understand the power of the mind to heal. And we start to understand chi and what chi or prana is and how it underpins everything in the body at a mental, emotional, physical level. And it also takes into account the totality of a person's life, including their physical, emotional, mental, spiritual levels, their social environment, but also beyond this life into previous generations, but also karmic influences. So we, we expand out and out and out and we see a bigger picture and we see the bigger or, or the more number of elements which come into play when we want to understand what is causing illness. So let's come back to epigenetics and Bruce Lipton. So Bruce has written prolifically about this topic and lectured on it. And his first main book was The Biology of Belief, which talks about his research into genes and DNA and discovering that the environment ha had an influence on genes and DNA and changed DNA. And he is a stem cell biologist. And in 1982, he began exam examining the principles of quantum physics and how they might be integrated into his understanding of the cell's information processing systems. And his research at Stanford University between 1987 and 92 revealed that the environment operating through the cell membrane controlled the behavior and physiology of the cell, turning genes on and off. And his discoveries at the time ran counter to the established scientific view that life is controlled by genes and presaged one of today's most important fields of study known as the science of epigenetics. And many subsequent papers by other researchers have since validated his concepts and ideas. But even though his concepts and ideas are now relatively well known by quite a number of people, what is still interesting is that there are still many, many doctors and many people in the conventional med medical system who have never heard of Bruce Lipton or his work. So his deep and understanding of cell biology highlighted the mechanisms by which the mind controls bodily functions. And remember, when he says mind, we also have to think emotions because what we think creates feelings and feelings affect our thoughts. And the person who did a lot of research into how emotions change body chemistry is Dr. Candice Pert in her book, Molecules of Emotions. So it's really important always to think it's not just the mind, it's not just the thoughts, it's the emotions that actually create a lot of the change inside the body. Because if we didn't have those two working together, then maybe just the thoughts alone would not make such a difference. But it's how we feel about what we're thinking that causes the change inside the body. So epigenetics is, is about what happens to us in our environment, which affects how we feel, which in turn affects our cellular function. If you think about your life, and especially 
your early upbringing because in my experience illness is set up in the first few years of life although it doesn't show up often in the first few years of life it may show up at that time but often the actual symptoms don't show up for some years later down the track but if you think about your particular situation what was your environment like when you were growing up and how did you feel inside how did you feel emotionally what types of thoughts were you thinking in your environment when you were growing up did you feel safe or not were you happy or not what was going on emotionally mentally energetically also at a, a cellular level at a hormone secretion level inside your body and what happened when you grew up and what is happening now and everything in between and in order to think about that we have to think about it's really about people a lot of this really these things get set up as a result of the people around us so when we think of environment we need to think people who was it who was around us in our environment when we were growing up or even now or at certain stages of our life where we didn't feel safe or we didn't feel happy in other words we were having a, a build-up of emotions such as fear and frustration and loneliness and sadness and grief and hurt and disappointment and all these types of emotions which are the emotions at the core of many symptoms so what was your physical, social environment like? How has that been throughout your life? And remember also that this social, physical environment also includes our mother's womb when we were in the womb. That was an environment for us. What was your mother's life like and how was she feeling when she was pregnant with you? And this is also really important to think about because the baby feels everything inside the mother. And as I've said before, what I've noticed is that whatever happens in the first few years of our life really sets up the propensity for illness later in life. So we really have to look at what happened in those first seven years. And stress and emotional trauma experienced by the age of seven to 10 years sets up a propensity for illness later in life and I have found that to be in 100% of the clients that I've worked with over 16 years 100% not even 99% it's a hundred percent and that is because whatever happens to us creates emotional responses inside of us which creates unconscious beliefs and then unconscious behaviors and ways of thinking and acting and being which then lead us to put ourselves in stress and perpetuate stress and have unhealthy harming self-damaging behaviors and lifestyle behaviors and that all later down the track leads to symptoms as we have already gone through in this program so physical and emotional stressors wire the brain and the body chemistry for health or illness and remember that our beliefs and our habits are formed unconsciously and then we consolidate and build on all of these after the first seven years but because this all happens unconsciously we don't even know that we've done it and we even have to take into account and i'll be talking about that in a separate video the the limbic imprint when we're born so literally everything that happens to us from the moment we're born and even before that from the time that we spend in the womb it's all having an impact on us and it's setting us up with certain imprints inside of us which lead to our beliefs our behaviors our emotional responses our thought patterns and so much more and all of that over time accumulates and then later down the track we find ourselves with symptoms 
So we could say that the first seven years of life set up the foundation of health and happiness or potentially illness and unhappiness. And once we start to understand this, then it puts everything in perspective and we get the big picture. And this is what we need to understand. We need to look at our whole life, the whole big picture of our life, to understand ourselves and to understand why we find ourselves where we are right now, potentially with symptoms. So as I mentioned before, at the start, I said epi epigenetic effects. So what are epi epigenetic effects? Well, this is just my classification. It's very random, but really what I'm alluding to here is the effects which reach beyond this life. So the research, for example, that Bruce Lipton did, which he then termed epigenetics, is what is happening in this life while the organism is alive and what is happening to the organism now. But we could look beyond this life. And what we need to do is we need to look at, well, what happened to the generations before us? And what if the energetic imprint of previous generations was passed through to us? And what if even the belief systems and the traumas of our ancestors were also passed through to us at an energetic and genetic code level? And what if those memories and energies were affecting and limiting your life today, but you didn't realize where the cause came from? Now, it's beyond the scope of this program to go into this level of healing. In my experience, I found that this level of healing needs one-to-one -one therapeutic help in any case. But the reason I'm bringing it in here is to expand your mind to other possibilities. Because when we have deeply embedded ways of thinking and being, it can go even deeper than just what has happened in this life. It can go beyond this life and it can be due to things that have been passed down to us through energetic imprint from previous generations. And what we have to remember is when we are conceived by our parents and the sperm and the egg come together and we are conceived, then all the information from previous generations is in that sperm and in that egg. So from your mother, you know, you go back that lineage. From your father, you go back his lineage. All the en energy and information from previous generations is encapsulated in that sperm and in that egg. So it makes sense to consider the fact that that information is coming into you and is going to be part of you. And in Chinese medicine, they say that that is why all our knowledge is in our bones because the bones are connected to the kidneys and the prenatal chi and all the energy from previous generations is passed down into this prenatal chi which is associated with the kidneys and the bones and and that is why they have sayings like well i i knew it in my bones or i felt it in my bones so for example Say you had a grandmother who was in the war or was starving or had some sort of trauma, they experience that trauma and that has an effect on them. It has an emotional effect on them. It has a physiological effect on them. It's going to affect how they think and what they believe. And that is all encapsulated into their being energetically, biologically, physically, mentally, emotionally in every way and it becomes part of who they are and then that energy and information and remember chi is energy impregnated with information and chi is the fundamental building block of life that energy and information is passed down from them to their offspring to you and so we can be carrying a whole heap of stuff that isn't even ours. It could be something from our parent, our grandparent, or even a previous generation.
but most people in, in the conventional medical system would, would not even be considering this as a possibility. It's way out of their normal mode of thinking. But I'm bringing it in here as a concept for you to consider and you might wish to explore it and take it further. And then there's also another level to the epi epigenetic level, which is karma or karmic imprints, which is not in our direct genealogical ancestral lineage. It is about other lives. If we have lived other lives and what happened in those lives that affected us or is affecting us on a soul level. And this is an even bigger aspect of things to look at, which again, I don't cover in this course and I'm going to share in a moment why, I, why we don't need on the whole to look at things from this ancestral or karmic level. But this may be of interest and some people can get quite deeply into this level of healing or exploring themselves. So I bring it in here as a concept for you to consider. And to say that the reason in my experience that we don't need to focus so much on the karmic aspects or the, the ancestral uh, aspects is because if we just focus on what has happened to us in this life, it is enough. It, it is enough to help us clear what we need to clear. But just to say a little bit more on the karmic side of things, karma is about the law of cause and effect and the principle of we reap what we sow. And what this means is that when people say, oh, well, you're reaping karma or there are karmic causes for whatever your problems are, and they could be problems more than just health problems, then what they're saying is that something happened in another, another life and maybe we behaved in a certain way, in a not so nice way, maybe in a negative way in a previous life. And because one of the laws of the universe is the law of cause and effect, where A, we reap what we sow, but also uh, there's got to be a balancing act, if you like, of if we've done something negative, then at some point we're going to uh, reap the consequences of that and have to make amends to balance things up. Then potentially sometimes some people say, okay, well, if you're ill, it's because this is a the, the law of karma playing out and you're reaping the rewards or the consequences of what happened in a previous life. And it was interesting because many years ago when I was looking to get well and I was trying to work out why I was ill, and I went to an astrology workshop and the person running the workshop had never met me and they didn't know anything about my situation. They didn't know I was ill. They knew nothing. And they put my chart up you know, in, in the group, it was a group class. And they said, hmm, that's really interesting. Uh, you have what's called a, uh, I think it was called a Rahu Kato snake effect with the planets and how they were lined up. And he said, you're likely to have health problems until such and such a date, because this is what is showing up on your astrology chart. So this brought in yet another concept of astrology which could be linked to karma but if we look at our astrological chart and we understand things from that perspective we can also see that according to how the planets line up and astrological influences we can have certain challenges turning up in our life so this is another element that can help us to understand things as well and if you go to a good astrologer, then you may get some insights on that. And it may well have been, for example, that those astrological influences were part and parcel or connected somehow to karmic influences. So to summarize, we could say that there are these three levels uh, around genetics, genetics, epigenetics and epi epigenetics. From a genetic perspective, 
People will say that your genetic code determines your health issues and your propensity for health or illness. And therefore, there's much, not much you can do and you're pretty much stuck with what you're born with. But obviously, that is a very limiting option. Fortunately, epigenetics has now proven beyond a doubt that your response to your environment will turn genes on and off. And therefore, if you change your internal responses, in other words, you change how you're feeling inside, which may necessitate you changing your environment, this will in turn affect changes in your genes. Therefore, you're not stuck with your genes, but they are changeable. They will change. And epi epigenetics, which is just, as I said, my coined term, uh, doesn't really have much meaning, but it's just to demonstrate a principle here. It is saying that there are unconscious influences being carried through from beyond this life, which we have no recollection of, which may be affecting our energetic matrix and our genes. Things like our ancestors, karma, astrological influences, these sort of things. And if we work on things at this level and clear things at this level, then this can also affect our health. So hopefully this has given you a little bit more to ponder on and expanded your view around what causes illness, in particular from a genetic perspective.